Hi, I'm Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com, and welcome to the ninth video in our Poker Math series, Probability of Making Big Hands, Sets, Full Houses, and Quads. Knowing the odds of hitting a big hand helps you evaluate your options more effectively, whether you're deciding to call, raise, or fold. And most importantly, it helps you avoid costly mistakes when things don't go as planned. Let's get to it, starting with one of the most valuable hands in poker, sets. A set is one of the most powerful hands in poker, made when you hold a pocket pair and one of the cards on the flop matches your pair. For example, if you have eight of spades and eight of clubs and the flop comes the eight of diamonds, king of clubs and the two of hearts, you've hit a set. It's important to understand the difference between a set and trips. A set is created with a pocket pair and one board card. Trips, on the other hand, occur when one of your whole cards matches a pair on the board. The probability of flopping trips is about 1% or 99 to 1 odds. Sets are harder for opponents to detect, making them more profitable in terms of implied odds, while trips are more visible and often riskier. Also keep in mind that if you flop trips, there is a slight, but existent, probability that another player could be holding a full house, or even the same trips, but with a stronger kicker. You'll be dealt a pocket pair about 5.9% of the time, or roughly once every 17 hands. If you're holding a pocket pair, the odds of flopping a set are 11.8%, or about 1 in 8.5 flops. If you miss the flop, your chances of making a set by the river drop to around 4%, or 24 to 1 odds. This makes hitting a set on the flop the most critical opportunity for pocket pairs. The profitability of pocket pairs often depends on the size of your opponent's stack and the potential implied odds. If you're facing a small bet and your opponent has a deep stack, it might be worth calling preflop to chase a set. However, if the implied odds aren't favorable, folding is often the better play, depending on the rank of your pocket pair. Pocket pairs are strong, but they're not invincible. The chances of another player holding a higher pocket pair depend on the number of players at the table and the rank of your pair. Take a look at this chart. It shows the probability of another player holding a higher pocket pair, depending on your pair and the number of players. For example, if you're holding pocket eights in a nine-handed game, there's a 26% chance that at least one other player has a higher pocket pair. In a six-handed game, this probability drops to 18%. Quick calculation method. If you don't have access to this chart, here's a simple way to estimate the odds. Multiply the number of players by the number of higher pairs and divide by 2. For pocket 8s in a 9-handed game, there are 6 pairs that beat you. 9s, 10s, jacks, queens, kings, and aces. 9 players times 6 is equal to 54. Divide by 2 and you get 27%, close to the actual 26% probability. The larger the table, the more cautious you should be with mid and low pocket pairs. For example, small pairs, twos through sixes, are better suited for set mining in deep stack situations. Mid pairs, sevens through nines, are strong in short-handed games, but risky in full ring games unless the table dynamics favor aggressive play. High pairs, tens and up, we can play aggressively to protect your hand and push out drawing hands. A full house is made when you combine three of a kind with a pair, like eight of spades, Eight of clubs on a board of eight of diamonds, king of clubs, six of diamonds, ten of spades, and king of hearts. If you've already hit a set, the odds of improving to a full house by the river are 33.4%, or about 2 to 1 odds. If you're holding two pairs on the flop, your chances of making a full house by the river are 16.7%, or 5 to 1 odds. For a quick calculation, multiply the number of outs by 4 to approximate your chance of hitting by the river. For example, if you're holding a set, the 7 remaining cards that pair the board give you a 28% chance of making a full house, close to the exact probability. While full houses are strong, beware of weaker full houses in multiway pots. For example, if the board is the king of clubs, king of diamonds, seven of spades, seven of diamonds, and the three of hearts, and you're holding ace of hearts, seven of hearts, anyone holding a king holds the winning hand. Remember, there is a 15% probability of being dealt a king or any random card preflop. 
In similar scenarios with full houses, evaluate the board texture and your opponent's tendencies carefully to avoid costly mistakes. Quads, or four of a kind, is one of the rarest and strongest hands in poker, such as seven of clubs and the seven of hearts on a board of king of diamonds, seven of spades, seven of diamonds, ace of hearts, and the king of clubs. The odds of flopping quads with a pocket pair are about 0 0.2%, or 406 to 1. If you start with a set on the flop, the chance of improving to quads by the river is 4.2%, or 1 in 24. Let's say the board is king of diamonds, seven of spades, seven of diamonds, ace of hearts, and king of clubs, and you hold ace of spades and the king of spades. You have a full house, kings full of aces. While this is a strong hand, you need to consider the possibility that another player holds quads, such as pocket sevens. This is where combinatorics, hand reading, and betting patterns are vital. For example, there is only one possible combination of pocket sevens remaining, the seven of clubs and the seven of hearts, making it highly unlikely, but not impossible, for another player to hold quads. To dive deeper into how probabilities like these can help refine your decision making, check out the article over pair probabilities preflop on pokerrailbird.com. It's a must read for mastering preflop strategy. Small pairs are best suited for set mining, where you aim to hit a set on the flop and extract value from your opponents. However, this strategy is most effective in deep stack situations where the implied odds justify the investment. Mid pairs can be strong but situational. In shorthanded games, they're often worth playing aggressively, but in full ring games, you need to be cautious, especially if there's significant preflop action. High pairs like jacks, queens, kings, and aces should generally be played aggressively preflop to thin the field and protect your hand from drawing hands. Your position at the table plays a huge role in how to play pocket pairs. In early position, stick to playing your strongest pairs, as you'll face more players who can potentially outraw you. In late position, you can expand your range, especially if the action before you suggests weakness. Always factor in the tendencies of your opponents. If you're up against tight players, pocket pairs gain strength as they're less likely to encounter aggression. Against loose players, be prepared for more resistance, which may reduce the profitability of small or mid pairs. Dry boards, such as the King of Clubs, Seven of Diamonds, and the Two of Spades, often means your hand strength depends on your pocket pair or a set, as there are no strong draws on this board. Mid or low pairs should be played cautiously unless you hit a set. Wet boards, like the Nine of Spades, Eight of Spades, and the Seven of Diamonds, containing both a flush and straight draw, are dangerous for pocket pairs, even if you hit a set. Pay attention to the board texture to avoid overcommitting. When chasing improvements like a full house or quads, remember to calculate probabilities for each street separately. If you flop a set, your chances of improving to a full house on the turn are about 19.6% or 4.22 to 1 odds. If you miss the turn, you have now have 10 outs on the river, which will give you a 22% probability or 3.6 to 1 odds. Although your combined probability for both turn and river is about 33.5% of making a full house always recalculate pot odds on each street to ensure the call is profitable based on your current outs and board texture. Trips can be vulnerable. Trips are a strong hand, however they can be vulnerable to full houses or quads. For example, if you hold eight of clubs and the jack of clubs and the board is the eight of spades, the eight of diamonds and the king of spades, there's a risk an opponent holds pocket kings, giving them a full house. Use combinatorics to assess the likelihood of an opponent holding a full house. Combine this with hand reading, betting patterns, and body language to refine your decision making. If an opponent shows significant aggression on a paired board, consider whether they're representing a full house, or they may also have the same trips as you, but with a stronger kicker. Trips are rarely the nuts in these situations, so avoid overcommitting without strong evidence of your opponent's range. Recognizing and avoiding common pitfalls. Overvaluing weak full houses. Weaker full houses, such as sevens full of eights on a board of eight of spades, eight of diamonds, seven of spades, seven of diamond, and the two of hearts, can lead to costly mistakes. 
always consider whether an opponent could hold a stronger full house or quads before committing your stack. Ignoring pot odds and implied odds. Don't chase improvements without recalculating pot odds on each street. For example, if you're offered 4 to 1 pot odds and you have only 4 outs, giving you a 9% or 10.5 to 1 odds of making your hand, it would be mathematically incorrect to call, as this play has a long-term negative expected value. Misreading paired boards. On paired boards, overconfidence with trips or weaker full houses can lead to major losses. Pay attention to opponent behavior and bet sizing, as these can provide clues about their hand strength. Strategic play with big hands requires a combination of math, observation, and adaptability. Whether you're evaluating pot odds, reading opponents, or analyzing board texture, staying disciplined and observant will help you make the most of your strong hands and avoid costly mistakes. Imagine you're playing a $2, $5 no limit hold'em cash game with a $1,000 stack. You're in middle position and are dealt 7 of diamonds and the 7 of clubs. An early position player raises to $15 and one player calls before the action reaches you. With pocket 7s, this is a great opportunity to set mine as you have favorable implied odds if you hit a set. You call, and two players behind you also call, making it a 5-way pot with $75 in the middle. The flop is the king of spades, 7 of hearts, and the 2 of diamonds. The flop is perfect for you. You've hit middle set on a relatively dry board. The initial raiser bets $40 into the $75 pot, and the player to their left calls. With a set, your goal is to maximize value. In this spot, raising is ideal to thin the field and protect against potential draws, even though the board is fairly dry. You raise to $120, leaving your move consistent with a strong hand or even a semi-bluff. The players behind you fold, and the original raiser and caller both call. The pot is now $435. The turn is the four of clubs and doesn't change much. It's still a dry board with no immediate draws completing. The original raiser checks and the next player bets $200 into the $435 pot. This is where you need to pause and analyze. While your set is strong, consider. Could the better have a hand like king of clubs, king of diamonds, giving them top set and the potential to make a bigger full house or even quads? How does their betting pattern fit hands like ace-king, king-queen, or even a slow-played pocket aces? Based on their previous actions, you decide to just call, keeping weaker hands in the pot, and avoiding overcommitting in case you're beat. The original raiser folds. The board pairs on the river, making the final board the king of spades, seven of hearts, two of diamonds, four of clubs, and the king of diamonds. Your opponent bets $300 into the $835 pot. At this point, your full house is strong, but it's not the nuts. Consider. If they hold the only remaining combination of pocket kings, king of hearts, and the king of clubs, they've made quads, and you're crushed. If they hold ace king, king queen, or king jack, etc., then they have trip kings, which you beat with your full house. Using combinatorics and pot odds, you determine that the chance of them holding quads is low compared to the likelihood of them having trip kings or an even weaker hand, like pocket aces. You decide to call the $300 bet, recognizing the favorable pot odds. Your opponent shows ace-king, and you take down a massive $1,435 pot with your full house. Key takeaways. 1. Set mining with pocket pairs. The decision to call preflop was based on favorable implied odds. With a five-way pot and deep stacks, the opportunity to maximize value if you hit your set made it a profitable call. 2. Maximizing value on the flop. Raising on the flop thinned the field and protected your hand from potential drawing hands while disguising the true strength of your set. 3. Careful river analysis. On the river, you combined combinatorics, betting patterns, and pot odds to make a profitable call. Recognizing that there was only one combination of pocket kings that beat you, compared to multiple combinations of trip kings and weaker hands, allowed you to make the correct decision. Thanks for watching this video in our Poker Math series. We hope you've gained valuable insights into the probabilities and strategies for playing big hands like sets, full houses, and quads. Don't forget to test your knowledge with our quiz. 
The quiz link will be posted in the comments section of this video, so head there to challenge yourself and see how much you've learned. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with your poker friends. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. For even more poker strategies, articles, and tools, visit us at PokerRailbird.com. Keep studying, practicing, and sharpening your skills at the table, because in poker, knowledge is your greatest edge. We'll see you at the tables.